Chapter 6. Earth's Pleiadian Cousins Many a night from yonder avid casement, ere I went to rest, did I look upon great Orion sloping slowly to the west. Many a night I saw the Pleiades raising through the mellow shade, glitter like a swarm of fireflies tangled in a silver braid. Tennyson During the early development of the Lyran system, the first friction between the polarities began to occur. Some Lyrans manifested the idea of the feminine polarity intuitive and allowing. They believe the path to reintegration is through inner development. Other Lyrans, however, polarized to the masculine. Their philosophy upheld the notion that in order to evolve, they had to dominate the known universe. This caused much dissension between the two. As the Lyran civilization developed, a group of Lyrans decided they would prefer to develop their culture away from that which they perceived were negative influences. Thus they searched the galaxy for a new home. In their search they found a young planet rich in natural resources, and this planet with Earth. For several generations this group resided on Earth, coexisting peacefully with the developing primate race. However, over a long period of time they found that they were not adapting to Earth's physical and electromagnetic environment as well as they desired. During this time, they incorporated small amounts of genetic material from the primates to assist them in assimilating to Earth's environment. Over generations, their DNA changed slightly, allowing them to become more adapted to Earth. While these Earth Lyrans were incorporating primate genetics into themselves, other group of Lyrans were on the planet to carry out the Founder's wishes, as well as their own, by inserting Lyran genetics into the primates. The arrival of these Lyrans refueled the conflicts the Earth Lyrans initially escaped from, so they chose to find another planetary system to colonize. Desiring to build a new culture when they could become isolated from old conflicts rooted in their past, they explored the region widely before they decided on an open cluster of young blue stars known as the Pleiades. When the Pleiadian star system began to be colonized by Earth Lyrans, it was intended to be a very balanced, independent race. This was reflected in their choice of a new stable star cluster. More than anything else, they desired to create a cluster and culture based on harmony, truth, and unconditional love. Once the colonization plan became known, those of Lyran descent who desired a new home decided to colonize other areas of the Pleiades star cluster as well. These early Pleiadians, the previous Earth Lyrans, possessed highly developed intuitive skills, as well as an inbred desire to create a community lifestyle. The whole wasn't important as the self. Even with this desire, it took these beings generations to mature and create their own identity separate from their Lyran roots. For generations, they developed this new culture which was philosophical in nature and technologically progressing at a rate perfect for their development. Though there were several periods of conflict, the culture base that these new Pleiadians created remained stable for many thousands of years. Over generations, the community-oriented Pleiadians began to favor peace and tranquility so much that they learned to invalidate all forms of negativity. Deeper and deeper, they submerged their natural humanoid tendencies until a great emptiness appeared within their being. There was no conflict, resolution, or learning. A voice cried out from within them. This was a portion of them that desired to be heard. From this well of despair, they reached out to their Lyran forefathers. When the call was answered, the Lyrans were surprised to find a culture that had virtually cut itself off from creation. The Pleiadians had no knowledge of what was occurring in the universe around them. They were unaware of the anguish of Orion, even though they were both descendants of Lyra. When the Pleiadians were made aware of the Orion struggle their own sleeping dragon awakened, they felt a passion. Once again they felt alive, a deep mission was sparked within their soul. They offered to be of service within the Orion struggle. It was then that they committed themselves to fighting the Orion negativity. Thus it began. They entered the Orion struggle through many vehicles. Some souls chose to incarnate directly into the system within both polarity orientation, positive and negative, in order to understand the struggle. The majority of these Pleiadians incarnating into the Orion struggle became ensnared. It is easy to enter the Orion reincarnational cycle, but virtually impossible to escape. Others chose to allay themselves with the Black League, or continue to incarnate within the Pleiadian system, and attempt to contain the expansion of the Orion Empire. They fought with every ounce of their being against the negativity they saw around them. Unconsciously, they also fought the negativity still further within themselves. The struggle continued. The Pleiadians fought as zealously against the Orion negativity as they did their own latent shadow selves. 
Instead of finding a truth within, they only perpetuated their hatred of their own negativity. It was only when the Orion Empire destroyed one of their populated planets that they disengaged themselves actively from the Orion struggle. The lifeless, charred planet still stands in their system as a reminder of their past actions. When that planet was obliterated, the Pleiadians were devastated. Finally, an impasse was reached. On the highest levels of being, every consciousness involved in the Orion drama took a step back. They evaluated the situation. It became obvious that the resolution needed to occur from a different angle. They agreed to extend the conflict to another arena within the galaxy. The Pleiadians were faced with a choice. Would they return their energies to their home world, or would they agree to resolve their own issues, as well as the Orion struggle once and for all? Initially, they chose to return home. This allowed them to gather their strength and search the very depth of their souls to find a way to become whole. They were so afraid of the negativity that they became immobilized. They waited, they pondered, and they faltered. While they waited, the Inception project began in full force upon the Earth. The Lyrans were the physical directors of the project under the Founders, accepting assistance from other physical groups such as the Syrians. It quickly became apparent that they needed a genetic structure of terrestrial as well as extraterrestrial origin for their Inception project, and they contacted the Pleiadians. At first, the Pleiadians expressed reluctance about becoming involved with Earth once again. However, the Lyrans pointed out possible Pleiadian benefits with a deft craftiness. Knowing that the Pleiadians had originally incorporated Earth primate genetics into themselves, the Lyrans admitted that they needed certain aspects of Pleiadian DNA for the developing Terran species on Earth. Unknowingly, they also created a way for the Pleiadians to face their negativity once and for all. It was proposed that a DNA transfer from the Pleiadians into the Terran species over a long period of time would create a race of humanoids who would be terrestrial but would also have extraterrestrial roots. The closest ancestors of these Earth humans would be the Pleiadians, and through these family ties the Pleiadians would be allowed to be involved with the Earth species development. During this involvement they would observe the developing race, interact intermittently in order to keep them on course, and learn about human negativity. This vicariously would heal the pain of the Pleiadian past, and after some reluctance to associate once again with the Lyrans, a group of Pleiadians finally agreed. From this agreement came thousands of years of Pleiadian interaction with nearly every primitive culture upon the earth. Drawings of space beings and spacecraft adorn many cave walls, and many ancient documents record the action of these gods who come from the sky. They saw themselves as gods no more than today's humans do. However, from the point of view of primitive people, they surely must have seemed like gods. During certain developmental stage of a humanoid species, it is common to give up personal power to a godlike or magical figure. This became widespread, and soon the Pleiadians began to relish the power that they were given. They began to wield it. Some began using fear in order to manipulate it. Their soul-level agreement to learn from the developing earth transformed into a satiation of personal desire. Many ancient myths concerning jealous gods are directly linked to these extraterrestrial beings from other systems, including the Pleiades. When these power binges occurred, it was necessary for these extraterrestrials to be reminded of their purpose. Very often, resentment built up on the part of the Pleiadians toward other visiting groups. For a period of a few thousand years, the Pleiadians grew in power, and then were consistently reminded of their place. The irony of the situation soon became known to them. They had wished to get in touch with their negativity, and their wish had been granted. During these interactions, the Pleiadians involved with Earth were all from the same time continuum. Their contacts were consistent with their development. They had not yet mastered the complex technology of time-space manipulation. It wasn't until the 20th century that Earth has begun to pull in Pleiadian contact from many different time frames simultaneously. Though contact continued intermittently until the present day, it is slowed in comparison to earlier times. Most Pleiadians no longer consider Earth humans to be children, and they allow humanity to make its own choices. Once Earth began its technological era, it was watched very closely for the critical mass necessary to activate the DNA code for the preservation of the species. Since the 1940s, both physical and non-physical extraterrestrials have been monitoring humanity and attempting communication, mostly in subtle ways. The Pleiadians were the first to begin a major benevolent contact program physically with Earth, Although this was quietly carried out in the early 30s, it began to be noticed on a wider scale in the 1970s. 
In the 1970s, a Swiss man named Billy Meyer documented hundreds of hours of communication with the Pleiadian cosmonaut Semjays. He also possesses a large number of photographs of the Pleiadian spacecraft, which, using photographic technology, have never been proven to be false. He claims to have been taken both backward and forward in time by the Pleiadians and their allies, the Dolls, to view various events. This contact has caused major controversy since it was revealed. Meyer had been provided with evidence by the Pleiadians themselves, such as a metal sample which was analyzed on film by a noted IBM scientist. The analysis revealed an unusual combination of materials, including a rare and expensive element called thulium. And when analyzed further, the sample seemed to display properties of both metal and crystal. The metal sample subsequently disappeared, but the film analysis remains. Within the UFO research community, this case is a classic example of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Because it is too easy, it is considered to be fraudulent. When Meyer attempted to construct models of Pleiadian spacecraft to see if the photographs could be faked, the models were found and the whole case was labeled a hoax. The teachings of the 1970s from Semjay and her associate are now beginning to be more widely known. They teach spiritual truth as well as a partial history of the Pleiadian race. Some teachings warn of impending natural and man-made disasters connected with a new age to come. It seems that these Pleiadian beings were from an orientation in their history, where warning humans about approaching cataclysms was part of their contact philosophy. Though these teachings may have been applicable when they were given, one may question how they relate to today's mass consciousness. There is an indication that the mass consciousness of Earth made a shift from a future of disaster to one of increasing responsibility during the time period of 1980 to 1982. Since the Pleiadian teachings were given before the shift was made, perhaps they represent an old idea. It does not necessarily mean that they are not valid, but it does mean that perhaps there is a different outlook coming to humankind instead, one which reflects the choice and change humanity has recently made on a mass conscious level. The Pleiadian contact coming to us presently, both in physical and telepathic form, may echo a different voice. Some claim to be the future descendants of Meyer's Pleiadians. These Pleiadians speak openly of their difficult past and why they felt they needed to use certain tactics in dealing with Earth. They admit to having their own motivation for contact and thank this planet for all they have learned. They are helping society to shed light on other forms of contact in which they themselves are not directly involved, such as negative abduction experiences. They are sincerely assisting humanity by whatever means they can, allowing the planet to achieve a global as well as galactic viewpoint. The Pleiadians have specific reasons for being tentative in their present interactions with Earth. For thousands of years they have stepped in either to protect us from danger or to control us like children for our own good. Some splinter groups even manipulated mankind for their own purpose. This has been a source of great shame to them. They now realize that humanity must make its own choice and they must trust the human ability to do so. They have created a karmic cycle through their interference. For their own growth, it is imperative that this cycle be relinquished. The thought of perpetuating the pattern of interference on Earth is the single most fearful idea facing a Pleiadian. Will Pleiadian contact with Earth continue in the future, since they are the most similar to the Earth human physically in fourth density form? It seems appropriate that they become one of the first to walk this planet undisguised. They stress, however, that as much as humanity might want to meet its cousins from the sky. They will not initiate an open contact program until humanity can embrace its brothers across the street. It is up to this planet, it is humanity who is calling the shots. Are we finally ready to let go of the fear of recognizing our heritage and accept their outstretched hands?